Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with Ask Dave. And the question that you asked me was, how do things like BBC Music Magazine come up with these lists of the greatest conductors of all time? I mean, what, what goes into it? And why do they always put like Simon Rattle first? And, you know, my answer was initially facetious, which is, well, they're obviously not listening and he's British and they're British and that's all there is to it. Frankly, I still think that's the simplest answer. I really do. But the truth is, any list like that is really stupid. It's going to be stupid because, first of all, we don't know who's putting the thing together. We don't know what experience they have of listening in order to put it together. We don't know what the criteria were to get into the list. And so what are they doing? They're just, they're just making hay and, and nonsense. And their, their, their impulse, of course, is to promote people who are still around and who can sell records and who are, you know, names names as established by their own PR or by the PR of the industry, you know, these public relations machines. They're, they're most famous names at present, not necessarily greatest artists historically. I mean, if I had to do a list of, for example, who the, the greatest art, artists, uh, you know, conductors, let's forget artists generally, conductors of the 20th century, who would be on the list? Well, you and I have been through all this, and we know we know who we would put on that list, basically, right? We would put probably Toscanini, Sell, Fritjoy, Markevich, Martinon, not the most popular names, but the recordings are there, and the evidence is there for people who want to listen to it and people who want to make the comparisons. I'm not going to do the list. I, just, I think lists like that, particularly are kind of, are really kind of pointless. I mean, I've tried to do, for example, major composers, and I think I've done a couple major artists lists, I don't know, but they make me squeamish. I'm not so, so, so worried about doing works, because works, musical works, and are, are based on actual, like, you know, taste and listening that's obvious, and you can be honest about it. But to talk about, uh, like, conductors or pianists or violinists, I think it's just incredibly stupid. I really do. The level of artistry today is, is very, very high. And the fact of the matter is that if you go see a concert by a conductor who I think is just a transparent mediocrity, like Simon Rattle, for example, it, you're going to come away being relatively happy. You know, I mean, they, they're not going to be terrible. Well, I've seen some that were terrible, but I mean, terrible in the, in the, in the sense that you feel like you've gotten ripped off. Like you haven't gotten your money's worth. The orchestras are terrific. The conductors wave their hands around and then the right music comes out. If they say they're doing Beethoven's Fifth, you hear Beethoven's Fifth. And I always found that seeing a live concert is such a thrilling experience. I mean, it really is just to see an orchestra and hear an orchestra. It's so wonderful. It almost doesn't matter what they do. That's why, as a critic, I seldom review live performances because I don't see any point. You know, it's over. Once it's over, the audience had a good time. So what am I supposed to tell them? That they were stupid for going or that their, their good time wasn't a good time? I mean, it's ridiculous. When you're dealing with recordings, well, then you can make the comparisons. That's a different thing. That's a consumer product. And you can compare one recording to every other recording of the same music. And that, believe you me, is what the people who are making these lists are not doing. They absolutely aren't. They don't have the time. They don't have the experience. They don't have the knowledge. I, I, I guarantee you, because the number of people who do is rather small. And the chance that that rather small group of people is actually in charge of making the list? Well, what do you think? Really, what do you think? I mean, I see it all the time. It's all about time, experience, knowledge, and then there's some sort of, you know, taste involved. And what do you think the chances are that the person making that list has all of those qualifications? I don't think I have all of those qualifications, quite frankly. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, there are people who've listened to just as much stuff as I have, who have very different tastes from what I do. They have different criteria for what, what, mean, what constitutes greatness, I mean, whatever that means. We're not even getting to the question of how you define the term. 
And so they're going to have a different list and perhaps a perfectly legitimate one. But there are, of course, there is a separate category, I suppose, of like legitimate list based on experience where the where the difference is only a matter of taste or a list based on just ignorant stupidity. And what you get with these like BBC lists and gramophone lists and all that is the ignorant stupidity list. Nine times out of ten. You really, really do. There, there's simply a pointless exercise in filling up space and getting advertising and and trying to attract, of course, readership because people love lists. I've been doing lists, right? Lots of lists because they're popular. I understand why they're popular. They're convenient and they can be really intriguing and interesting. I try and when I do a list, I try and make sure it has a nice mix of familiar and unfamiliar. And I try and focus always on the music, always on the act of listening so that you can make your own comparisons. You're not going to hear greatness. You're really not. And you're not going to hear greatness comparing Roger Norrington and Simon Rattle or all these other these other fault or all people to, you know, George Sell and Wilhelm Fortwängler if you're not going to put the time in to listen to huge swaths of repertoire of both, assuming that all of that repertoire is still available to listen to. I mean, you know, it's just it's just a foolish exercise. It really is. And I, I sympathize with those of you who feel that, you know, it's a put on because it is a put on. <laughs> it's a total put on. It's a completely, a completely random and meaningless put on. A lot of it has to do, especially with the, the British press, with pushing British things, which they've always done. I mean, the British musical establishment, which is what you were talking about, is a a, a teeny tiny, teeny tiny, oh, tiny old boys club where they basically have a consensus about what they're going to promote. And what they're going to promote is always going to prioritize that which they know or that which is British. And that's what they do. And it's the same thing in most European countries. Don't get me wrong. If you read French review magazines, you're going to see a lot of stuff that's French. If you read Spanish, you see a lot of stuff that's Spanish. I mean, the Italians, hello, my friends, the Italians, they're completely nuts. You can't say a word against Claudio Abbado. He's a genius. He's God. Everything he touches turns to gold. I mean, I, I see it also. I see it in comments to my reviews and I see it in the literature. I see the way they, these people are promoted. It's completely nationalist bullshit. And it has nothing to do with the experience of listening. The United States is rather different. The United States has such an inferiority complex that we tend to get down on things that are American and promote things that aren't. But at least, at least there, at least there, there's, there's a, a mixture. You know, we get to pick and choose. And so I'm not saying there isn't a bias or there isn't a, an issue with some of that stuff, but it's a different one. It's a different approach. Um, so I think in some respects, the list that you're going to get may be a little bit more ecumenical than the ones that you find in various European countries and institutions. Look at what happens with Long Long and China. I mean, these people do things for reasons that have nothing whatsoever to do with the act of listening to music, of listening carefully, of listening critically and comparatively, and drawing conclusions based on musical facts. That's not what this is about, these things, these listy things. It has nothing to do with any of that. And so that's the long answer. And I, I hope it's sort of clarified at least my position on these things and also what they really are, which is it's entertainment. It's, it's sometimes they're entertaining reading. Sometimes they're provocative. Sometimes they're fun. I mean, the list that in question, the BBC list that this 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 viewer mentioned had George Sell something like 13th and like Simon Rattle and God knows who else at like the top five ever. I mean, you know, I mean, it's so transparently ridiculous. It's laughable. It really, really is. But it has the sanction of supposedly experienced professional people. And so there will be some people who will take these things seriously. But I just ask you to use your own intelligence and just think about it. Think about what it means to say that this is the greatness list. You know, it's usually if you're not doing it just for fun or just to be provocative, if you're really serious and trying to say this is the greatness list, 
then, and you believe it, then you're just being snookered. And the people who are doing it are being just flagrantly dishonest. And that's just the way it is. So now you know, that's the answer. Keep on listening, friends. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care.